What's up guys? Welcome to another video. Now you've probably already seen the teaser where we did the unboxing of the Flash Forge Artemis 3D printer. And now it is time to review the printer. As you can see here, it is in action. It is printing and hopefully you can tell how quiet it is and you can hear me and that's amazing. Most 3D printers, especially the older ones, there's no way I'm going to be doing a video in front of it while it's printing. It's just going to be terrible. So I want to thank Flash Forge USA for sending this to the channel for review. And as you're watching this, this should be live and available to purchase. And uh, again, this is the Artemis 3D printer. I'll have a link in the show notes so you can go check out the Artemis and all other Flash Forge uh, items and printers that they actually have on their website. So let's go ahead and take a look at the key features. So as you can see, the frame on this thing is relatively large. So what this means is you're going to have a larger build volume. So it's got 190 millimeters in length by 195 millimeters in width by 200 millimeters height. That's a lot of room to build. So as you can see here on our axis, uh, the horizontal axis, we've got a lot of room to build tall. And width-wise, we've got a lot of room on our platter here to build width. So you're going to actually get a lot bigger prints with this device, which is really something that 3D printing is morphing into. I mean, people are printing all sorts of larger scale items that used to be little things like little chest pieces and little trinkets and odds and ends, and it's just blossomed up that you need this kind of space. Also, the maximum extruder printing temperature of this device will reach 260 degrees Celsius, which means you should be able to get really crisp, cut, clean, high resolution, if that's such a thing in 3D printing, outcomes. Because of the higher temperatures, your filament is going to really just look like one solid. You're not going to get all those little grooves and lines and everything. It's going to be a lot more crisp and clean, higher resolution prints. It comes with the glass and the PEI magnetic build plates. So right now the glass is the default option. Uh, it comes with the build plate. I'll get this here. It's a flexible kind of plate. Um, you can just swap it out. Alright, so you've got that. I already mentioned it's quiet. So, so you can tell we're printing and it's quiet. Wi-Fi and cloud printing. So not only can you come up and just plug in a USB device, which I have right here, and print after you've sliced your, um, your files to the Artemis and print it this way, but this can get on Wi-Fi, which I do have it now. It's a 2.4 gigahertz uh, limitation, so I couldn't go 5 gigahertz, uh, unfortunately. Um, and at the time of this review, uh, I would say that there needs to be another firmware update to this because what I found was I walk away, it stays on the network, I leave it on, and the port stops listening. Uh, 8899 is the port. So what you do is you install their flash print software on your computer. It can be a Mac, it can be Windows, uh, which you'll use through your network. If you have this on the Wi-Fi network, you will look at the information on the touch screen. So this is a beautiful touch screen down here and you'll get the IP address. You'll put that in. If it doesn't auto-detect it when you're, you're scanning your network, uh, mine, for some reason, did not auto-detect. So I came in here, I hit info, found the IP address, the port, put it in manually, boom, it connected. And um, so then I was able to send a file after I sliced it with their software on my PC directly to this through the network. So I didn't have to like copy it to the USB drive or anything like that. Now what I also like about this is it can print from the cloud, so if you want to connect it to a cloud storage option and put files there, it can see those and print. So that is a feature uh, that, uh, you know, everything's going to the cloud, so why not, right? And again, this is compatible with third-party slicing software. You don't have to use their fine print, so don't worry about that. Um, you can use um, a lot of the open source stuff that's out there. Uh, so it shouldn't be a real big issue whatsoever on doing that. Uh, again, I did mention that the screen here, color, it's touch 
so I can basically come through here. So if I wanted to uh, click settings, pause the print, stop the print, uh, I could do that. Plus, this gives you a lot of information about the printer. It shows that I've got a USB drive. It shows that I've connected to the Wi-Fi. It shows the platter and the fuser temperature uh, that are up here running. And it gives me the build time. So this one's actually been printing for 41 minutes with 34 minutes remaining. It's the Cylinder QX, which was a sample file that they provided on this actual install. And then we've got what layer? 90 of 171 on the layers. So that's another good thing uh, where we're at. And again, it has the uh, platter temperatures. And again, everything that you need to know about what's going on. A little image of what your, uh, your print's going to look like. And that's just cool. And again, it's really sturdy. Uh, the filament is on the back. It just spools it on in uh, as it needs it. So, you know, it's just like... You don't have to do a whole lot of leveling and calibration and stuff, which is beautiful. Some of the older 3D printers were such a pain. Um, this one is, you know, pretty much get it up and running. You go through a leveling process on the platter, which I did. Once I did that, um, I just pretty much went in, joined the Wi-Fi network, sent a file to it, hit print. I did have to load the filament. That's just something you're going to do on every 3D printer, so no big deal there. Now, if you missed what this comes with, I did an unboxing. I'll have a link up here as a card and you can go and you can see what all you're going to get with this. From the flexible platter uh, that's non-glass to all the little tools and trinkets that you get with it um, and filaments and stuff like that. Grease, extra uh, parts, all that kind of stuff comes with it. Of course the user guide, the USB drive here. Uh, all that good stuff. Um, and <clears throat> we are going to be printing and showcasing this a lot more. Okay, this isn't going to be it for the Flash Forge 3D printer. We're going to try to do some printer fun. And as I find cooler items, now I did, I'm going to show you this. I did try to print <laughs> a watch holder, 3D print watch holder, that was supposed to be like a knight off a chessboard. And once I got to about here on these free floating uh, pieces, uh, it went south. Okay, so my first real Thingiverse download and print, um, that's what I got. So it was looking good. It was getting up to like the top, like three fourths of the way done, and then it just unraveled, literally. Yeah, so this didn't print, and it was just free form trying to print in the air versus having a little uh, device here or a little uh, bracket. And uh, yeah, it just went south. So anyway, but you can see how real uh, detailed oriented this is with the uh, the hotter temperatures. You don't have a lot of those little lines and stuff, so it looks really, really good. Um, not the best example, but that's what future videos are for, right? We're going to come back and we're going to show you a lot of new videos. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to get the camera off tripod so you're not rocking around. I'm going to show you a close-up of the screen, and we're going to go in deep for the printer and I want you to try to just listen and hear how quiet it is, see how precise it is as it prints. Get in there, we're going to get in the weeds, and you're going to see this printer up close. Might as well call it a colonoscopy of the 3D printer, and you're coming along for the ride. Here we go. As for mentioned, here's all the information you get on the screen, as you can see. You can pause this video, I've already gone over it, but you can see there's a lot of information on this here screen. Now let's go ahead and go in for the print heads and you can see beautiful precision printing. We're going to try to zoom in here even more. This is the cylinder. So you can see it's just printing like really, really nice. Just a beautiful little cylinder just for a good test. And go up top. Nice. We're going to go around back. And as you can see, hopefully you can see, it's a little dark back here, but there's filaments. That's really it on the back. Power, power button. It's all good. Anyway, Flash Forge. Artemis. 3D printer.
printing never got any easier or improved with the Artemis Flash Forge 3D printer. If you like this video guys, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more 3D printing videos, hit that like button again. Subscribe to the show. And put a comment on there. Maybe give me some ideas of some great print ideas. Some files out there that maybe you've seen that I can slice and print. Um, and we'll give it a run. If you want to see if this thing can do certain things, challenge me. Give me the file. I'll put it in the printer and we'll see what we can get. As always, guys, if you like this video again, like it, subscribe, hit the little notification bell so you'll be notified when we release new content. And as always, thank you for watching. Thanks again to Flash Forge USA for providing this to the show for review. This is an unbiased, unedited video when it comes to my opinion. And again, thanks for watching and have a good one. Thank you.